So Tuesday, I told you that Republicans finally have themselves a voter fraud scandal on their hands, but really it's an election fraud scandal. And this is all out of North Carolina's ninth district. This was a congressional race in the 2018 midterms, which we had at this point about, about actually, I think it's been a month to the day um, where Republican Mark Harris supposedly defeated Democratic opponent Dan McCready by 905 votes out of 280,000 cast. And we had reports of people being paid to pick up absentee ballots in person, illegal, reportedly handing them off to a known Republican operative, also illegal. And then we had a whole bunch of other little issues reported, little compared to that one, but still significant issues, problems at the polls, unrequested absentee ballots arriving at people's houses, really major red flags about the integrity of this election. We now have more news. More than a thousand absentee ballots have been potentially destroyed. Thousands. Remember, the race came down to 905 votes in favor of the Republican. We still don't know exactly what is even being alleged here because there are many moving parts. I mentioned on Tuesday that a ton of absentee ballots had witness signatures from the same group of people, which is really strange. Why is there a group of people involved as signing off as witnesses for so many people's mailed in absentee ballots? Didn't really make sense. We haven't gotten an explanation. So what investigators are now looking at are basically two uh, two different areas of investigation. One, have people connected to this Republican activist, Leslie McCray Dowless, who consulted for the Republican candidate in the race? Were they gathering unsealed absentee ballots, marking them for the Republican and then signing them as witnesses? That would be unconscionable election fraud. And it's one explanation for why they're going around asking for people's absentee ballots that they haven't sent in. That's one possibility. We now also have the destruction of absentee ballots component, and that would suggest a different strategy, which is showing up pretending to be election officials to collect absentee ballots from voters in Democratic areas and then destroying them, ripping them up, throwing them in the trash instead of turning them in. Uh, House Democrats are looking for an emergency hearing. Unclear if they're going to get it at this point, but my concern, Pat, is that this story needs a lot more attention. There is fraud happening. It's not people voting twice. It's not people showing up and giving the names of dead people. It's not illegal immigrants from Massachusetts getting on buses and going up to New Hampshire to vote for Hillary Clinton. It's this Republican suppression of the vote, and it's not getting the attention that it deserves. Well, the good news is that the election hasn't yet been certified, but the new Congress, the 116th Congress that's set to take place in a few weeks, and I'm worried that there's going to be this rush to get it all done. And I hope there is a thorough investigation into all of this. Uh, I, I hope they don't they don't just figure, well, the Republicans up by 905 votes and North Carolina's ninth needs a needs a representative. So we have to make sure he's ushered in right away. No, let's slow it down. Make sure that we understand who actually won this election. We're talking about thousands of possibly destroyed ballots when the margin of victory was 905. It's Republican suppression of the vote. They are straight up trying to steal an election and they might get away with it. Uh, there's, by the way, an entire additional story here, which I haven't even gotten to, which is that some of the same patterns that we saw in the general election in the North Carolina ninth seem to have existed in the primary. For, for Republican Mark Harris, which implies, although it's not yet proven, that he did the exact same thing in the Republican primary. People actually need to end up in prison here if any of this is proven. Today's program was made possible in part by Blinkist.com slash Pacman. I love Blinkist. It's the really perfect app for anybody who likes politics and learning. And if you're watching or listening to The David Pacman Show, I'm sure you love politics and learning. And what Blinkist does is take the best and most popular nonfiction books. They condense them into 15 minute audiobooks that you can listen to in one sitting. And you can learn about politics, philosophy, psychology, economics. Often we don't have the time to actually read as many books as we would like. I know that I'm at my limit for how much I can read. And this way you can absorb the most important 
valuable information from books in just 15 minutes, maybe on your way to work, maybe on your way to the gym, maybe cooking vegan recipes at home, whatever is your thing. And our audience can get a seven day free trial by going to Blinkist dot com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, I've put a link in the video description. And after the free trial, if you like it, and I think you will, you can continue enjoying thousands of condensed audiobooks for just about five bucks a month. You can go to B L I N K I S T dot com slash P A K M A N to sign up.